There we are. That's the right button. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, other shows on the New Thought Media Network, they have a producer. And here mm -hmm. we just have this guy who sometimes gets befuddled and realizes, oh, wait a second, I need to do that. So that's what it is. Well, anyway. Yeah. On my end, I have a few things to adjust. One being the heater. And it's never on before I get on here. So I'm not thinking about it. But right. As and then it cranks as itself up. As, yep. As soon as we start talking, bam. And I'm like, okay. Right. So I sent a text. It's off now. Okay. And you, and you live near the airport, so periodically right at showtime, the, the, the fleet, the squadron flies in, which is, <laughs> is always fun as well. And of course, it's, uh, it's April showers, Mayflower season is coming, and uh, since Steve with the power lawnmower is going to be in full force every Monday. But, you know, it's, it's, that's life. That's what happens. There's a, you know what? One of these times we're going to talk about this noise thing because I'm going through it now. It's like unbelievable that it is bothering me, that it, it didn't bother me before, but now it's just everywhere. And um, yeah, I got to tell you, it, it is funny because I was, I'm <laughs> going <laughs> to, it's funny if it's not, I want to, uh, I told you I wanted to have an in house studio. Yeah. Hookup. Build the, 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 the silent room there. Yeah, and I was just, my mind is going through all these. So I went to the ocean yesterday, a different part. Just fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Oh, I was so excited. And I thought, but if I live here, what kind of soundproofing could you, I mean, this is the ocean. You just don't tell the ocean when to talk. You know, you can't turn it off. And Yeah, there's, not, there's no hushing. <laughs> no, so, and I thought, is there any soundproofing on the planet that would work for this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's not not cheap, but yeah. So anyway, it's... I'm all tangled up in that, and so you can do a practical prayer for me on that one because I don't think I can do it. I think I'm too got too much. I'm too confused. Pieces fitting together perfectly, clarity, yeah. wisdom, and divine guidance as your next perfect steps. Uh, I'm making the observation that if the Chinese water torture were invented today, it would probably use leaf blowers. <laughs> 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 you are not well <laughs> <laughs> it is april 1st so okay yeah there's okay. that and welcome to everybody who is uh, uh either watching us uh live on new thought media network and our various social media channels uh or watching the uh the rebroadcast of the recordings uh later on uh this is the pre-show uh we are getting ready to record episode number 147 of the practical prayer podcast which will go into podcast land in a week and a half or so. Uh, and in the, the pre-show part, we kind of chat about what's going on and set ourselves up for what's going to happen in the podcast. And we also communicate with folks. If you have a comment or a question or a suggestion or a uh, request for a prayer, uh, you can put into the comments on your social media now. We'll see them and take them under consideration. Or if you don't want to do that, especially if you're watching on uh uh, on the recording. You can go to the website, bethelight.com, be-the-light.com, and there's a practical prayer section there, and you can find the comment button and do the same thing uh, using the website uh, as an alternate form of technology. So uh, with that stuff said, um, <clears throat> it's the 1st of April, which in the sales world is Q2, and in the humor world, it's April Fool's Day, and in the Christian world, it's Easter Monday. Actually, that's only in the part of the Christian church where they didn't do big deal Easter yesterday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then we got to walk to Emmaus today. You know, get off walk on to that Emmaus. Journey. Yeah, yeah, we got okay. Fifty days of Pentecost. Yeah, and we're in the midst of Ramadan, so there's there's some stuff going on. Yeah. Passover's coming up before too long. And April showers. Which I'm having right now. You have them where you are? Yeah, I was surprised because the end of March had lots of showers, and I thought that April just got ahead of itself and we were already seeing some of the flowers, but it's, it's raining today. It's going to be raining for the first half of the week. So go figure. Yeah, yeah. I, I did look at the forecast, and I didn't see a clear day till Monday. And I thought, really? really? Well, first of all, it's probably not going to hold out because down here it says rain and it doesn't but just the idea of this is monday you're gonna rain till next monday really 
What, what yeah. about my hair? What about my, <laughs> what you know? A, what about your hair? What about my hair? Yeah. Oh, look. Let's get indignant. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so for the episode today, you want to talk about the ego some more. You want to clarify some of the things we talked about before. Did we talk about this before? The ego? We've mentioned the ego. And you, yeah. and what you said right before we went live is that you, you wanted to clarify the ego. And I'm thinking about ghee, which is uh, clarified butter that the uh, Ayurvedic cooking uses. And mm -hmm. that's not what you meant. You're not talking about melting the ego ahead of time. <laughs> so your clarifying is different. Yeah, yeah. So give me a little flavor about what we want to talk about. Well, um, it means different things in different camps. So, of course, when I came to New Thought, um, I don't remember, nobody talked about it very much. Well, look, I wasn't talking to a whole lot of people either, though. <laughs> <laughs> but I had one perception of the ego as a, as a bad guy or something that you struggle with and i never like like it was um if you have an ego it means that you're you're cocky and you're this and you're that and that was the perception that i had good bad or otherwise that's just what i thought and when you would talk about it i'm thinking like i always i think i've got this ego under control like i don't want what anybody else has and i'm not trying to be better than anybody else i just want my own thing y'all leave me alone <laughs> so <laughs> I thought essentially that was keeping your ego under control. Like you weren't competing, you were not, uh, let's see, you weren't competing and you weren't wanting what somebody else had and conniving to figure out how to, that, that was my perception of it. Okay. And, okay. So and I can you completely know... understand because there's, there's of course another way that we talk about ego in new thought and I am itching to talk about it, but instead of itching and instead of talking about it, let us start the podcast and then we can talk about it so that it'll actually be on the podcast. Okay. A practical prayer is a prayer that works. These discussions between Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence dive into the details of how it works and how to work it. Reverend Bill is a new thought minister and the author of Practical Prayer for Real Results. Your new life begins with a new thought. Carol Lawrence is on a spiritual quest, finding the New Thought teaching after decades on the pulpit in three different traditional denominations. I've got some questions. Together, they're exploring the philosophy and activities that come together from many of the world's religions to create the practical spirituality that is New Thought. Welcome to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol, here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. Hi, everybody. Hey there, and we're going to talk about the ego. Apparently, we're going to talk about the ego some more, because we have talked about the ego before, but um, there, there's a little bit of confusion, and there are several different ways to think about the ego. And until we have clarity about it, we're liable to think about the ego using one framework or parad paradigm, and uh, get that mixed up with another one. And of course, that's game on. That's that's how Blake Edwards made all of those movies so funny. But it starts with one misunderstanding and then it's a misstep after another. Yeah. So you're going to clear all this up because... Uh... <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> no, <laughs> then, the, then we wouldn't have another episode of the movie. Yes, we will. We'll <laughs> we will definitely uh, bring some clarity to our understanding of the ego. So I would like to have you start by talking about your understanding of ego, uh, either um, in the good old days when you were in traditional religion or in the newfound days of new thought or um, what happened when you made the, the, the switch between them. And then we'll zero in on how to what to talk about next. Okay, so I'll talk about it in the, when I was, I call it across the street in traditional church religion. It was... Um, when you thought better of yourself than you really were, when you were very competitive, you wanted to beat the next guy out, you um, 
Well, I said talk, we were better than you if you beat the other eye out. And uh, you would want, actually, covetousness would have covered this a little bit better, but, you know, you want what somebody else has. And so you do everything you can do to either have, steal what they've got <laughs> or have what they've got <laughs> or whatever. You know, it was just all in that kind of understanding. And because of that, I actually took great pride. Like, I'm putting this out there. I took great great pride in saying that my ego was under control. Well, it was easy for me to say that because I never saw anybody have what I wanted. And <laughs> there you go. That That's the honest to goodness truth, you know, and I, I was around a lot and it was never any work or ministry that I saw that I wanted. Mine was extremely exclusive as far as I was concerned. So it was no reason for it. If I had this uh, terrible thing of ego, it just was sleep. I thought, <laughs> and so okay. then I met you and you're speaking in new thought language and you're using the ego and you're saying a couple of times you said you have to get rid of the ego. And I'm thinking, I don't, first of all, my ego, I haven't seen it, you know, maybe since I was two, I don't even know what that looks like. And what are you talking about? But I figured, you know, more than me. So I'll just sit there and wait and it'll unravel eventually. So I did understand that there is a different, um, understanding, definition, because uh, everything has a lexicon. So the ego means something a bit different on this side of the street in New Thought. But then maybe, before we get started, maybe I'm going to say that maybe not a whole lot. Maybe I just was looking at it through a very small lens because there's something in the Christian church uh, labeled the carnal man, <laughs> you know, which might be exactly what you're going to explain. But anyway, it would be good for you to just put this in context. It's possible. I may explain it. I may not explain it. So we'll start with, with basic psychology. Um, ego is the sense of self. It's what tells me who I am. And there are a lot of reasons that it's good to have an ego. Uh, my, my joke is that if you have a whole bunch of people with zero ego attachment, zero sense of self, zero need to claim their own existence or domain, you'd never be able to take attendance. <laughs> the person taking attendance would say, Carol, and you'd say, I'm okay being Carol or not. I'm not attached to being Carol. And you wouldn't raise your hand and help them. <laughs> so so in, in, in the most basic sense, that, that sense of identity, that sense of self that tells us who we are, that I'm in here is important and valuable. When the ego gets puffed up and starts to take itself a little too seriously. As you were talking about, it's when I won't want something that somebody else has, and I think that I'm better than somebody else, and um, I'm going to try and use the, 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 the tools at my disposal uh, here in life to, uh, to take the stuff that I want or to move the pieces around uh, so that they are fashioned in a way that I enjoy. That's the usual wrap about the ego. So on the one hand, everybody has one and it's very important to have one. And as you were talking before, keeping it in balance, not letting our egos take stuff away from us um, or, or, or get completely uh, crazy because then our lives become pretty much unmanageable. And that's all on the human physical walking around level. The part that we need to watch out for in new thought is the spiritual context of our ego. And when we talk about uh, what, where the ego gets a bad rap in new thought is, I'll give you the, the scenario. So we have this prayer technique, which is pretty simple and anybody can learn it. There's five steps, maybe seven. And in any area of our lives, we can use that practical prayer technique to create a new experience in our life. So, and I'll use an example of, um, prosperity. You know, so somebody is having a challenge with their prosperity. There's not enough money in the bank. It's the first of the month. And I'm really aware of it because I don't know how I'm going to pay for the, you know, I'm robbing Peter to pay Paul and doing all of those other things. We do a prayer. And the first step in the practical prayer is to acknowledge that there's an infinite creative power that creates everything limitless abundance. Okay. This is the, the power that creates galaxies. Okay. And the second step in the prayer is where we identify that that power has created everything and that everything includes me. So I am part of this one infinite creative power. 
And because I have conscious awareness, I'm using that same creative power to create the next experience in my life. So basically, in the first two steps, the recognition and unification steps of a practical prayer, we are putting ourselves on the team with the infinite creative power that creates everything. And then we affirm or realize our new truth. We say, I'm prosperous. I have plenty of money to pay the rent, to save, to share, to spend. I'm in the flow of that limitless, abundant goodness. I am prosperous, and there's no reason that I can't be. So I'm claiming my prosperity. And we're doing that in partnership with that infinite creative power that creates everything. And then we end the prayer with, with gratitude. I'm grateful for the good that's coming about. I'm grateful for the transformation, whatever we're grateful for. And I let it be, and I know it's so. And what we're doing in that process is we are taking that idea of our prosperity and putting it into the creative law that creates everything. And before you know it, what happens is a, a check shows up or somebody drops by the house to pay you back for something that you forgot they owed you for. Or somebody desperately comes over saying, I need somebody to help with this work. You're perfectly talented and skilled for it. Can you come and help me out? And this is what it pays. And it pays twice as much as you <laughs> needed and were expecting that you could have. And suddenly that prosperity happens. And that's just the way it works. That's just the way it works. And I hear you say, you're not talking about ego at all yet. And that is correct. I have not mentioned the ego part yet. Because what happens once we learn to do that, once we do that powerful prayer, and we create that new experience of prosperity in our life, and we're not limited there. We get new relationships that are happening in our life. We get new work that's showing up. We get new opportunities to do stuff. Our health and vitality gets wonderful. We get a free gym membership because somebody wanted to take to go to the gym and didn't want to go by themselves. All this good stuff starts happening. And the most dangerous thing that happens then is that I think, I'm creating all this great stuff. That's where we're talking about ego. It is not me doing it. Mm -hmm. That first First step in the prayer is identifying an infinite creative power and then identifying that I am part of it. If I slip into thinking that I'm doing the changing, that I'm doing the creating, then not only have I missed the point, but I'm undermining the possibility of it continuing to work for me. So we need to let our ego get out of the way and not think that we're doing it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Jesus did not say, the Father and I are one. When you see me, aren't I cool? <laughs> <laughs> you are on today <laughs> okay okay yeah 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 all right but let me see so you're yeah okay it's not that kind of reminds me of what you talked about two broadcast two um, podcasts back and then we touched on the last time when you talked about God is the manifester and I'm like oh my god that like now what <laughs> you know I thought we were co-creators but it kind of put things into perspective and what you said even puts it in further perspective so as a co-creator you there really isn't any room for the ego would that be a fair thing to say um it doesn't help there there's room for the ego in that we can convince ourselves that it's that we're doing it and when we do that it can be a huge distraction so there's no need for the ego there's an the, the only requirement is to understand that we're involved in this big creative process you know my nephew's an electrician and he can get the wires and the transformers and the things and the stuff and set it all up and have a perfect electrical circuit but if it's not hooked up to power nothing's going to happen he could be the, the best electrician in the world. Nothing's going to happen unless it's connected to the power. Mm. Mm. Okay, so one can be as gifted, as highly gifted as ever you can imagine, and nothing can happen if it's not connected to the power of God and the um, being in alignment. I think that's a, that's a good um, thought to, to connect to this. Yeah, sure. I, I get that. I get yeah, there's that. there's lots of metaphors, you know, the 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 fastest sailboat in the world. No wind, not going anywhere. Doesn't matter how good a sailor you are. 
And then you're talking about how good a sailor you are. If there's no wind, you're not going anyplace. The okay. wind blows, you can let it carry you faster than anybody else, but it's still the wind that's doing the work. So without the wind, you can see like I'm, you know, I'm backstepping through this. So without the wind, without the power, you only have the ego. Right? Yeah, if, if we're claiming that, that the wind is coming from us, then that's, that's our ego talking. No, the, the boat is not moving because of us. The boat is moving because of the way that we're working with that power. Mm. Mm. Okay. So then how would one know if their ego is what I used to call out of control? Because you're not going to kill it. <laughs> <sighs> this spiritual practice tends to have t tends to be i think a little bit self-regulating because what will happen is we'll have an experience in our life and then we'll get into a, the spiritual context of it we'll do the practical prayer we'll uh get ourselves out of the way and invite in something new and acknowledge that this infinite creative power is going to do it and then something wonderful happens and then there's a spiral we have this new good experience in our life and the same sort of thing comes around again, but it's either more subtle or more insidious or more difficult for us to deal with. It's the same issue. It's the same thing coming up again. And what we need to do, what we're invited to, we don't need to do anything. We can continue hitting our head against the wall as long as we want. What we are invited to do is surrender to let go of the thought that we already knew what the answer was going to be so that we can open more fully to that infinite creative power and allow something new. You now it's the old question. You ask people, would you rather be right or happy? Mm -hmm. And the ego says, I want to be right and happy, <laughs> or I want to be happy because I'm right. <laughs> and that's just a perfect example. When the question is, do you want to be right or happy? It's like, I want to be happy. Well, we might have to let go of being right in order to get to happy. And are we willing to do that? You know, and it's easy for me to, to say, well, of course, that's what we have to do. And it's not easy. It is not easy. The stuff that, that we think we're right about is that it's not trivial. <laughs> it's ingrained in our life. Of course, I'm right. How could I be wrong about that? About them, about her, about it. How could that investment have possibly been a Ponzi scheme? <laughs> Whatever. So then, I mean, that's, that's perfect. So how do you know when the ego needs to be reined in a bit, you know, because we, we're out here doing stuff and we know how to do stuff. We know what we're good at and all of that. How do you know when it's, as some might say, when it's God or it's you. <laughs> um, I'm ad-libbing this a little bit, but throughout, and I'll, I'll speak personally, throughout my life, uh, things have been going along, working really well, and then something will happen and there's either a disagreement or a conflict or it starts going sideways and it's not working the way that it had been working and it's not nearly as much fun as it used to be. And there's that feeling. Eh. Eh. And it's a little bit exasperation. It's a little bit um, frustration. It's a little bit anger. It's a little bit sad. It's like all the grief things. You know, it's like, oh, this was going so good. And I, eh. When that feeling comes along, it's time to look at our ego. Because for whatever the surrounding activity is, it's happening again. The same thing that caused those feelings, the same combination of experiences and, and perspectives and understandings and judgments that made us feel that the first time or the first hundred times that we felt, oh, this isn't working. The same combination is coming around again. Mm -hmm. And the thing to do then, instead of what our ego tells us, which is double down, grab hold, bring this back upright, force it into alignment, is to breathe out, let go, and say, what next is possible here? 
because we get to, to do that surrender at a deeper level. And that's letting go of our ego. And that leaves a whole lot more room for that infinite creative power that creates everything that, by the way, has created this next learning experience that we're having to guide us and inform us as to what we can do next to bring the, the, the gleeful, joyous experience that we want into our lives. So then, uh, on the 10 steps to getting your ego under control. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not just 10, but yeah. <laughs> you know, the 10 major ones, maybe that's, that's okay. So one of those is letting go. Yep. Maybe of your own idea, your own way of normally doing it and getting things the right way. Just let it go. Is that well, what you're make it sound so simple, but yeah, let it go. Well, it it can be simple. Mm -hmm. You know, it depends on your <laughs> threshold. It depends on your threshold for pain. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Yeah, uh, okay. All right, let's take a break. And when we continue, we'll talk about those white knuckles that clamp onto what used to be wanting it to come back. Learn to put practical prayer to work in your life. The steps are simple to learn and let you begin to get real results to create the life of your dreams immediately. Reverend Bill Marcioni's widely acclaimed book, Practical Prayer for Real Results, gives you a clear summary of the new thought principles behind practical prayer and the series of easy to understand steps found in the most effective prayers from religions and spiritual practices all over the world and throughout history. Practical prayer is not a replacement for your religion or practice. It's a technique to make the work you do in consciousness even more effective. The book includes 40 prayers on various topics that you can adapt as needed and use as your own. Practical Prayer for Real Results is available in paperback, Kindle, and audiobook on Amazon or at b-the-light.com. That's b-the-light.com. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol. We're here with Reverend Bill Marcioni. We we're talking about ego, the pros and cons. And on the one hand, everybody needs an ego because it lets us understand who we are in the world. And when we think that we are, <laughs> we are, we are one with the infinite creative power, but we are not in charge of it. So we are able to channel and, and accept and allow that infinite creative power to create new experiences in our lives. And it does wonderfully. And it is as we partner with it rather than as we try and control it, because we are not in control. Uh, we, we have an advisory position. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And if I, well, and if I, yeah, I've been on point with that one because, you know, I would often say, even on the other side of the street, listen, God, I have an idea here. Now, I know you know what to do, but just in <laughs> case... You know, you need some clarity. This is what I have, suggestions that I have. Yeah. yeah. A friend of mine likes to say, I look forward to seeing how God is going to work this out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And it's, uh, and it's the same thing about opening and allowing and, and, and making space. Uh, there's a classic scene in the original Karate Kid movie where Mr. Miyagi is trying to catch a fly with the chopsticks. And then the Karate Kid does, um, you know, of course, this is beginner's luck. Um, if you are trying to catch a fly, then it's an, a supreme act of dexterity to do it with chopsticks. If you're trying to get a drink of water and you're using chopsticks, your ego has led you astray. That is not going to help. <laughs> <laughs> And that's what happens is our ego tells us I can do this and I can do it the way that I'm, that I've been doing this and I'm good at this and I can make this happen my way. And that's when it's time to let go. That's when it's time to surrender the thought that the way that we've been doing it or the way that we want it to happen is not serving us <clears throat> and get back into that partnership with the infinite. Mm. So it's really getting a clear perspective, not just on who we are, 
or understanding who we are. And we can get a little out of control or a little, you know, whatever. But also understanding who the God, God, spirit, universe, you know, the big one, the big one is. <laughs> <laughs> and, and how we are in partnership with this. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's very subtle. Um, we, we're not in charge uh, we, in our relationship with the infinite. We're not in charge of the relationship. Uh, you know, I've brought that up before that if we think that there's something we can do to displease God, like if I, if I do this, it's going to make God angry. Well, there's a huge ego based assumption that I can do something to make God feel something. And that would put me in charge of the relationship because now I can control how God feels. And that's just not the case. So, no, it's about letting go of that too. So, no, God is not going to get mad. I, I might get mad because I've disappointed myself, but it's, you know, I'm just trying to bring God in as an accomplice <laughs> to help in my personal self beating. <laughs> that, that's a huge uh, belief system to undo right there. I oh, mean, yeah. You, yeah. You know, yeah. You, you spoke of it just so simply. Uh, because you know this stuff, I keep telling you, you know this stuff, but that's a huge one to get to get over. Um, because it's we've been talking really... about that since episode number one, so we're 147 episodes in, and it's still the same thing because it's still huge. It's still it's still like that's that's the big thing. Yeah, hard to hard to let go of. Um, it, it's quite a pleasure to let go of it. I mean, if you can just take a, a breath you know like, i mean it's a moment by moment growth i think in in that regard but once you get that then i mean you can really sail pretty well because it's not like you have to be afraid of god if you go this way or that way even when you know a lot of mistakes we make including with the ego okay until we understand it are are mistakes and uh, some of them are regrettable some some not so regrettable but it really takes a huge weight off of you to know that not only because you screwed something up that you didn't, whether you understood it or not, but then now you don't have to worry about like this divine power coming after you when you least expect it uh, to make you pay for the mistake. So this thing is huge. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, a little metaphor is that you're driving down the street and you make a right turn and you go down and you're starting to not be familiar and then you wind up at a dead end and if we think that god is punishing me by giving me this dead end then we've missed the point no we made a turn that we would prefer not to have made and we can go retrace our steps for for a while uh maybe if we didn't have the gps on we could turn it on and figure out how we got to where we are and then if we're really doing well, the next time we're driving down that street, we're not going to make that same right turn. Mm -hmm. We're going to turn a block ahead or a block past or where it is that goes through the dead end so that we have learned something and we have actually gone through some personal growth. And the biggest reason not to blame God when something doesn't go our way is because if we, if we just blame, oh, God didn't want me to have it. Well, that's the end of the process. There's no learning. You know, mm -hmm. the, 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 yeah. the, the result of that is I'm going to keep doing what I've been doing until God gets it and does what I want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I phrase yeah. it that way, it, it's pretty obvious it's not going to work. Yeah, but that, you know, I just bears repeating what you said. There is no learning in it. And and that's that's so important because, I mean... Yeah, sometimes people keep doing the same thing. But listen, when you just keep banging your head and there's another possibility, there's another way, uh, again, your threshold for pain here mm -hmm. really matters. And, yeah. and when you talked about going down the street and making turns to dead end, mm -hmm. I was at the ocean uh, yesterday. And there's an area that we go to that no matter what street you go down, it's a dead end. Because, I mean, if you go through, you're going to go into the... You're going to drive into the Atlantic, yeah. That's... Yeah, yeah. So, so and then dead ends are good. They're, they're <laughs> good. But it's, it feels odd 
you know, I guess maybe it's odd to somebody from Philadelphia. It feels odd not to be able to turn, to know that you can't make a turn and then go around a block and get yourself righted again. You can't do that. And I, when you said that, I noticed as we were driving yesterday, I'm thinking, well, all these streets are dead ends. <laughs> well, that's a pretty good <laughs> idea. <laughs> you know? But, yeah, it makes the point uh, because you learn. You know, you learn. There, there simply are no dead ends from Absecon Island all the way to uh, the Bogota. There's <laughs> no turns. And no maybe it's right a, turn. maybe maybe it's a, it's language. Maybe it's not a dead end. Maybe it uh, the road ends with an ocean view. I like that. It's about how you look at it. Let's take another break, and then we're going to do a prayer, and it's going to be on opening to what's new, and especially allowing, which is the technique that we get our ego out of the way. Mm. Are you ready to get results? Now, that's not a rhetorical question. Are you ready to get results? Are you R to G R? That's actually the abbreviation for the steps in a practical prayer. Recognition, unification, realization, gratitude, and release. With a couple of extra steps in there in case some doubt creeps in along the way. R-U-R to G-R. This class is about the prayer technique that's common to all of the spiritual practices and religions in the most effective prayers that they have. And by effective, I mean that the prayer works. It actually creates a change in the experience of the person doing the prayer. It gets a result. We're going to begin with theory, and then we're going to take it into practice. By the end of the class, you will have your very own practical prayer that will help create transformation in your life. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol, here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. We've been having a wonderful conversation about ego, the pros and cons, and how to know when our ego is trying to control us uh, and take us away from the spiritual center that we have and the growth that's possible. So that's what the prayer is going to be about today. And again, the ego is not bad. The ego is necessary, but the ego is also not what's going to be creating that next new experience that we're having in life. And it's kind of insidious because if our ego thinks it knows, if we think we know how something's going to work, then we can get attached to the how and not be involved in what we want to have as to be the outcome of the experience. We get ourselves distracted. So as a very simple exercise, uh, I invite you to take a deep, full breath and hold it at the top. Now take another deep breath in. And you'll find that you can't because you're already full. There's a little more room, but you need to release. <sighs> let go. Take a deep, full breath out. And let that make way for something. Now there's the possibility of another deep, full breath in. And as we continue doing that, as we continue to being open to something new, letting go of what's already been, releasing our attachment, in other words, getting our ego out of the way, thinking that that breath that we just took is the be all and end all, and that's all we need to do, and just let that oxygen keep on supplying us. It doesn't necessarily work that way. So I invite you to close your eyes if you're comfortable doing that, or go to a soft focus. And that lets us turn away from the details and the specifics and the indicators in the world around us. And let us open our inner eye to the possibility of what's new. And we know the sorts of things that we'd like to be experiencing in our lives. Sometimes it comes up like a, a catalog or an Amazon page or, or a, a search of what's the way I want this to look and what's the fashion that would suit me and what are the specifications that I like. And that's all possible. And when we breathe out, when we release, when we allow, instead of looking at the specifics and the, the color and the size and the shape and the price. And we consider how we're going to feel once we are having the experience of having this new thing. 
what we're actually doing is allowing an awful lot of room to maneuver so that the infinite creative power that creates everything can bring that into our experience. And it might be how we thought it was going to happen, and it might be completely different. It's the magic of the breath out. That's the power of allowing, letting go, opening to what is new, and inviting that infinite creative power, that divine source that shares itself as all of its creation, God, spirit, nature, the source, the creator, the Big Bang, whatever it is that we call it, that one has created everything. It has created each of us. And it is fully poised and prepared to create this newness in our lives. And as our ego puts down the spec sheet of how it's supposed to happen and what the schedule is supposed to be and what the dimensions of the shipping container are going to look like, as we release our attachment to the specifics, we open to the possibility of that newness, that grandeur, that wonder coming into our lives. And that infinite creative power that creates everything, that has created us, is creating that newness for us, through us, as us, right now. Sometimes it happens faster than we can possibly imagine. Sometimes there are curious delays that we can't explain until way after the fact. Sometimes there are things that we get to learn along the way. And still by engaging in this process, by letting go of what has been, of letting go of our judgment and the thought that we know how it's supposed to happen, and settling into the awareness of that creative power that's creating this newness for us and how that newness feels once it arrives, then the infinite does its thing and the good unfolds. And it's different for each of us. This is the same prayer for everyone who's listening to it, but it shows up differently in everyone's life. It is a co-creative process. And I'm grateful for the way that it's unfolding. I'm grateful for the good that's coming about. I'm grateful for the awareness of this creative law. And I'm grateful to know that the law is already responding and this goodness is already at hand. And so with a deep feeling of thanks for all of this good and the good still on the way, I speak this word and release it into that same creative law. And I know that it's already saying yes. And so I let it be. And so it is. The Practical Prayer Podcast with Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence is a production of BeTheLight.com. Be-the-light.com. Where you can find more information about practical prayer for real results. Our theme is by Music of Wisdom. You can learn about the spiritual community of New Thought Philadelphia with daily guided meditations, weekly celebrations of spirit, and Reverend Bill's classes in practical spirituality at NewThoughtPhilly.org. Well, that is the Practical Prayer Podcast. And, yeah. uh, we're, we're in the post show on New Thought Media Network now. Thank you to everybody who's uh, watching along live and, uh, uh, and watching the recordings here. Um, clarifying? Yeah, very much. Very much so. Um, it's, a, it's a bit humbling, you know, which I think is a good thing. Mm-hmm. And I used to shy away from that word humbling because that's another word that has, <laughs> you know, some, yep. some baggage that goes with it. And I think it, the baggage that it has has nothing to do with what it really means. But uh, for this, it is, it's humbling and creates space for greater gratitude, I think. Hmm. Yeah. Um. Does, in your opinion, the humbling go uh, hand in glove with letting go of the thought that God out there is making the decisions? To yes. know that there's a law that's responding? And yes. That, yes. that feeling of being humble is like, oh, well, wait a second. <laughs> there's a lot of electricity in these wires. I need to be careful. Yeah, and, yes, <laughs> exactly. And it's uh, to me, it's just really kind of sweet. Because, um, you know, I, I used to be a control freak. 
I remember. <laughs> <laughs> and and I'm you know what I'm not going to even be cocky because I think I'm not even sure if you can let that go altogether. It's like the ego; you have to keep it under control. Watch when it starts to peek out a little bit. But it it is such a nice feeling to say, wait a minute, I am not that great. You know, this <laughs> God that's great is not depending on me. Listen to this. God is not depending on me to make it th this happen or stepping back to make this happen. But this is what I did begin to feel. God, trust me. Hmm. And that was humbling, too. I mean, when you're humbled, you don't have a whole lot of words. It's just, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just don't. Like, God, trust me. Oh, my God. Look at this, the, the bigness of this job and how it can impact, hurt, or help people. And mm -hmm. I'm getting trusted with this. I better check in with God on a regular and <laughs> make sure. Um, so, yeah, the humbling, I think, is, is a really sweet thing. And that might not be the best word, but that's the way it feels to me. I, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, it's, it's, and gee, you know, it's not I, it's the Father within who doeth the work. Yeah. You know, so but, I'm, I'm the channel. I'm, I'm, I'm the front man. <laughs> I'm how it shows up in the world, but you know, it's not me doing it. But isn't that so cool? You know, that you're the front person. The other part where humility comes in is that, yeah, okay, I'm the front person on this, but not the only person. You know, right. I can I can pull this off, but I got to go. Matter of fact, I have a, an appointment at three o'clock today with the person that helps me do my work. And it is so humbling and like a deep sigh of relief that that person is in my world mm -hmm. because I know what I can do. I know what I can produce. But without that person. It's like nothing. It's just a pile of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got to talk about that one day, but I don't know what the title of something like that would be. It's just recognizing and appreciating the gifts that are in the world. And yeah, and well, it's the perfect time of year to do that. It's springtime. So, you know, go look around and see where there's not flowers. And notice where there are going to be flowers soon, and then watch as the flowers show up. Yeah. You know, my neighborhood's starting to fill up with cherry blossoms, which is like, where did these come from? Hmm. You know, mm. it's just fun, you know. And then the, the magnolia trees get going, and then they drop all their leaves, and it looks like a Barbie exploded. You know, it's just fun. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Quick note, if, uh, if you are watching the recording uh, on New Thought Media Network, um, you can go to bethelight.com, be-the-light.com. There's a practical prayer podcast section on there, and you can send a comment to us or question or a prayer request, and we will take it into the program. And uh, I just want to thank everybody who has, uh, who has joined us today. It's, uh, it's wonderful to be here. It is. See you next week. See you. Please help us say thank you to our organizational sponsors, including the Hefferlin Foundation, Affiliated New Thought Network, International New Thought Alliance, Science of Mind Archives and Library Foundation, Center for Spiritual Living Denver, Center for Spiritual Living Midtown, New Thought Philadelphia, Planned Happiness Institute, Summit Center for Spiritual Living, One Heart Retreats, Center for Spiritual Living on the Lake, Unity Kitchener, Unity Spiritual Center, Ottawa, Ohm Center for Spiritual Living, Satya Center, Begin Within Ministries, Center for Spiritual Living, North Jersey, Unity of Savannah, and the Center for Spiritual Living, Seattle, as well as all of our individual donors. Thank you for being part of the New Thought Media Network. Please like, share, and subscribe. New Thought Media Network, positively inspiring.